So today's video is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna talk about the history of who we are as a company and how we came to be. Let's get right into it. In order to do this, we have to go back to 1963, when we were originally wait, 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 founded. Wait, 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 I know, I know. Already? I'm sorry. Not even let me get past but the intro. You see, it didn't start there. In order to go back to the very beginning, we actually have to go back to 1946. You see, the 60s is when we opened our first home office. Okay, in Los, Los Angeles, California, California I but I got it. Okay, <sighs> let's see what you got. Let's try that again. So to start at the beginning, we do have to go back to 1946. See, originally we were founded by a gentleman named Bill Kasuga as Kasuga Radio Company Limited. Now, throughout the course of time, we began to evolve as a company and later became known as Kenwood Trio. However, it's not the final evolution, if you will, leading us to who we are today as Kenwood. This name came to be in 1963. Now, as the years went on, the car audio industry really started to pick up, leading into the 80s and 90s. Now, in the 80s, we released an industry first, with the KRC-626 being the very first singleton pull-out receiver. But it didn't stop there. We would later go on to do many other great things. For example, being the only company that could meet the strenuous weight specs that had to be met in the design of the McLaren F1 offering our neodymium speakers and our CD changer audio system for that vehicle. After helping out with the McLaren, we decided to keep pushing that envelope. Later, we would release something known as the Music Keg. Now, the Music Keg was a really cool product. This actually allowed us 20 or 40 gigs, depending on which one you purchased, of external storage. Now, at the time, people were still using CD changers and connecting them to the backside of their receiver. However, the Music Keg allowed them to have an external storage device where they could store up to 2,000 or more in some cases of their favorite songs and access them all from the receiver on this external hard drive. As an added bonus, it would even go the extra mile for you and announce the name of the artist before the song started. And it didn't just stop at receiver first. We continued to go on into our amplifiers and many other products. For example, later we would release amplifiers and receivers that could be connected together through something called BMS. Now, BMS stands for Bass Management System, and it allowed your receiver to control the amplifier's bass output without having to make adjustments on the amp itself. One of the coolest parts about some of these amps though, was if you did have to make those adjustments, you could do it in style with a motorized cover that would move left to right based off of whether or not the fan was being activated or you needed to access the adjustments on that amplifier to retune it properly. These are just a few examples of many of the products that brought us to who we are today. Being a company that could release something like our new 10.1s, for example, with all the bells and whistles and the biggest, brightest screen that we've ever offered at Kenwood, having that optical bonding technology to produce those vibrant colors or those added inputs, whether it's wireless mirroring, HDMI, and many more. And we won't stop there. We will continue to push this envelope and grow as a company for each and every one of you. So, what do you think? Was that up to your standards? Well, seeing as how I didn't interrupt again, I guess you did all right. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Hopefully you learned something along the way, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye. Kenwood.